We heard the scripture read earlier in our hearing, uh, scripture out of uh, Acts 28, and even in chapter 27, verse 39, to the end of that 27th chapter, is the prelude to chapter 28. It's a continuation, actually, that uh, last set of verses in chapter 27, um, dealing with the shipwreck, and then moving into uh, the situation uh, with the fire and the viper leaping out of the fire. Amen. So let us now, amen, keep that in mind as we uh, look to today's message. I, I want to share with you today, shake it off, amen. That's the message for today, is to shake it off, amen. Um, someone once shared these simple rules to happiness in life, very simple ideas nonetheless. Uh, free your heart from hatred is number one. Free your mind from worries is number two. Live simply is number three. Give more is number four. And expect less is number five. Um, in their honest simplicity, they hold some truth. Uh, when we would shake off uh, things that would uh, make us mad or we would free our minds of things that would complicate or worry us, uh, when we would just live a simplistic lifestyle. Uh, you know, it's in those early days, that brand new car, that we are most worried about somebody scratching it. Mm. And then after we've had it for a few years, we just pull into the supermarket and we just jump out and run in to get what we want without ever giving a whole lot of thought to whether or not somebody may scratch it while we're in the store. Mm -hmm. Just living simple, uh, giving more and expecting less. You know, those expectations that we have that Somebody's going to give us this great big gift for our birthday or do this and that for us and so forth. And then when they don't do it, uh, we feel cheated. Amen. Uh, and so these are some simplistic ideas that help us to shake it off in life. Uh, when life becomes too complicated for us uh, to handle. Well, here we find Paul uh, at a place where they were journeying, and uh, they were journeying by sea. The ride had become dangerous and complicated, and it looked like they weren't going to make it. that uh, it would not have a good ending. But they were unable to describe where they were uh, based on the darkened skies in this furious storm. Uh, that 20th verse of the 27th chapter, we discover uh, this fact. And yet and still they would find themselves uh, coming to the island of Malta. Um, somewhat miraculously they had been delivered virtually on course for their final destination of Italy even though they were not quite sure where they were or where they were headed. 
while they had to deal with this issue in the middle of a storm, the soldiers who were guarding the prisoners uh, had a plot, a scheme of their own. Um, they were worried about the prisoners getting away and escaping, and so they wanted to kill the prisoners. There was a centurion on board who God would allow to save Paul and keep them from their purpose. And he would command those who could swim that they would jump overboard first and get to land. And then those who could not swim, in verse 44 of that 27th chapter, the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. King James would say uh, that some came in on bits and pieces. <laughs> And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. So this was the first of the two um, fatal catastrophes that faced Paul. One was the storm in the sea. The other would be after he reached land. And he would encounter a viper that would latch hold of his hand. Uh, so he would face these deadly situations in his life. Yes. And it's on the basis of this second situation that our title comes from. Shake, shake it off. Amen. Amen. Um, as they land here on the island of Malta, uh, the first thing that they encounter is actually kindness. While they were tempted to be left for dead out at sea, uh, they find their way to shore and they find kindness on the island of uh, Malta. Look at verse 1. Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta and the natives showed us unusual kindness. So to go from being uh, shipwrecked and uh, thought to perhaps die at sea, they had uh, come to land and now find unusual kindness by the natives of the land. Uh, and as they were welcomed on the island, uh, they began to kindle a fire in the kindness of the Motis. Uh, they would kindle this fire. Uh, they would kindle the fire, and its idea was uh, to help them deal with the raindrops that was falling on their heads. Uh, it was designed to help them to deal with the cold bitterness of the winds and all that went with the waters uh, as they would be shaking from the cold. Yes, they would bring into their lives shelter from the rain and warmth from the cold in their acts of kindness. And sometimes in our lives, we oftentimes need somebody to greet us with kindness in our lives. We find ourselves with raindrops falling on our head. We find ourselves shivering from the bitter, bitterness of cold coming our way. Yes, we find ourselves struggling with uh, the wind and the waves of a storm-tossed sea and a ship that is broken up. How many times have we discovered in our own lives that we seem as if we made it only on bits and pieces? Mm -hmm. The scraps, the leftovers of a broken boat would serve as a bodyboard. They would serve as 
a flotation device that we could make our way to the land. We need kindness in our lives. Yes, uh, uh, but my brothers and sisters, nonetheless, even though they were greeted with kindness, uh, that kindness would turn from that to concern, moving from kindness to concern. And here was their concern in verse 4. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Wow. Their kindness switched up. While they had made a fire for these individuals who were lost at sea, struggling to swim the shore, floating the shore, and then they would suddenly make a fire. Lo and behold, lurking beneath those sticks was a viper. And when the fire began to kindle up the flames and the warmth of the fire would disturb the viper and where it was lodging and it would then move up out of the fires and as it would get up out of the fires it would let hold of Paul's hand grab hold of him biting him with its fangs now his History would tell us, and current events would say that uh, in Malta there are no uh, snakes with venom at the current time. However, the events of Malta has changed throughout the years, and its population growth has changed as well. Yes, and so perhaps that is reason why the snakes would have uh, moved out of the area. But as we look at uh, the reaction from the natives who were there, it's no question that they were accustomed to venomous snakes, venomous uh, vipers in that area. And that's the reason why their reaction was they assumed that he would die. The waters did not get him, but they figured that this here viper would get him. So it's no question uh, that they were accustomed to venomous snakes in the region during their time frame. Uh, and so as they would look at him, they would see him as one who was about to breathe his last breath. Um, one who would surely, surely die. Uh, that he was getting what he had deserved. That he would not be allowed to live left for dead at sea, and presumed to die from a poisonous viper on land. That's what Paul was faced with, and they had become concerned about what they were seeing. But this is, this is, this is the point that makes the difference, and I can sit down after this point right here. While they were concerned after expressing kindness, they realized that there was something about Paul. They said that he was perhaps a murderer or something. They had assumed the worst in him because of this viper that had latched onto him. They had assumed that he was some sort of evil individual some criminal of sorts. They assumed the worst. But there was something about him that would quickly cause them to take another look at Paul 
and to see him from a different light. And this is the part that will ultimately make a difference in your life and in my life. Because while he was waiting to see him die, uh, he shook it off. That's, that's, that's not the best part. It's on its way to the best part. But that's not the best part. It's good that he shook off the snake. That's a good thing. No one would have a poisonous snake hanging on them, allowing more and more venom to creep into their blood system. If you've ever been bitten by uh, anything that was poisonous in nature or had some type of uh, uh, venom uh, that would be transferred from them to you, uh, some disease uh, that they were carrying, you know, uh, like these mosquitoes, these uh, blood suckers uh, that uh, would be parasites that would uh, mix your blood with the stuff that they're carrying and you suddenly find yourself swelling up. Yeah, it was good that he was able to shake them off. Yes. Uh, but even though he had shook them off, they still had not been pulled off the book just yet. Yes, verse 6 says, however, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. Um, after they had looked at him for a long time. Catch this. I want you to pay close attention. They looked at him for a long time. Nobody had grabbed a tourniquet to try to tie it tightly around him so that the blood, uh, if there was poison in his blood from the bite, that it would not get into the rest of his system. Nobody was trying to help him. No. They just watched him. They would watch him as a poisonous viper would bite him. Sitting and waiting to see him die. I, I, I pause there on purpose because my brothers and sisters, Paul's not the first one where folks saw an individual in trouble. And rather than come to the aid of the individual, they just simply watched, All right. waiting for that individual to die. I remember uh, a couple of years or so back, it was on the news. There was a video taken of an individual um, who was beaten. And ironically, it was caught on video. A video that was attached to a cell phone. Catch me now. Instead of utilizing the cell phone to call for help to rescue the individual, they used the cell phone to just simply capture the beating. They would watch and wait for this individual to die rather than intervene and try to save the individual. But they would watch for a long time, and as they would watch for a long time, they changed their minds. I recall Jesus saying in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
they watched him for a long time, waiting for him to fall down and die. Individuals watch you and I for a long time, waiting for us to fall down and die. I know we got them this time. I know they're dead now. But as someone once said, the reports of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. Listen, Matthew 16 and 18, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell or Hades shall not prevail against it. God has set up a plan and a purpose, and there is nothing that can thwart the purpose and the plans of God. Watch this. The late Dr. T.L. Willis, who passed of the Pilgrim Hope uh, Baptist Church there in Los Angeles, shared this message on one occasion, ignorantly and in vain. They waited to see the preacher fall. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, how true it is even unto this day not only do they wait to see the preacher fall, they wait to see the Christians fall. They wait to see the church fall. Uh, but I love the first part of his subject matter is ignorantly and in vain. <laughs> yes, they would stand there waiting and gazing. They would stand there looking for a long time, but ignorantly and in vain. He would still stand. No harm would come to him. And because of this, yes, uh, they had to change their mind. They had supposed that justice had caught up with Paul. But really, providence was preserving Paul. It was the hand of God that was upon him uh, doing as he had predicted and prophesied earlier, that nothing shall by any means hurt you until God would say it's time that you would come home. You cannot be taken prematurely from my purpose. So as God would call us home, Vipers and snakes can never do us no harm. Once again, they got it wrong. Yes, they would think that he was uh, about to be executed by justice, but they got it wrong. And then as they looked at him, uh, yes, and they would change their mind. They then presumed that he was a god. On another occasion, uh, yes, uh, in Acts, they would chastise when Paul and Barnabas was called or referred to as God. Yes, uh, uh, they would chastise the crowd. So as they would come here to this 28th chapter, uh, there would be no need to uh, repeat the chastisement, uh, yes, uh, they left it at the point of them changing their minds and recognizing that God was with him. And so while he was not a God, uh, yes, one thing we understand, uh, that they were close to the truth even though they were wrong on the facts. No, he was not a god, but however he was a man of God, yes, uh, he very much knew God. Yes, he was in fact a servant of God, yes, on a mission uh, sent by God. Yes, so they were close to the truth, 
Yes, in his relative nature to God. Yes, uh, his assignment uh, yes, that God had on his life. So my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, while we never all get it twisted and believe that we are some sort of a God, yes, we ought to, yes, at all times, reassure and affirm our relationship with God if we are to obtain and retain the promises of God on our lives. We are to see God's protection over us. Yes, we ought to walk with him and talk with him along life's way. So long as we are in his plan and in his will, as long as we're living out his purpose for our lives, yes, we have his covering over our lives. And when we have the covering of God over our lives, we can then shake it off. No matter what viper attaches itself to us, we can shake it off. Yes, no, no matter what it is that we face, when we face this hurdle, or that hurdle. When we face this windstorm, when we face, uh, yes, raindrops falling on our heads, uh, yes, when we find ourselves in the drought, in the desert, uh, during the heat of the day, my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, we can shake it off. Yes, yes. <laughs> we have the protection, Thank you. the provisions yes. of God in our lives. As I sit down, I would remind you of that same story that was told of a farmer's donkey that fell down into a well. The donkey would cry out pitifully for hours as the farmer would try to figure out what to do. So finally he decided that seeing the animal was old in years. Well. That it was best. That he just simply cover it up. That it wasn't worth trying to retrieve the donkey. That he would just simply wash his hands of him and so he would invite his neighbors to come over and to help and they would agree yes that this donkey needed to be retired and they all grabbed a shovel and began to shovel dirt into the well on the backs of the donkey initially the donkey as he realized what was happening to him he would continue to cry out horribly as they shoveled dirt after shovel of dirt onto his back, he would cry out horribly until suddenly he stopped crying. Yes, he stopped crying because as they would shovel the dirt onto his back, he then would shake it off and pack it down. Another shovel of dirt would fall on his back. Another would fall on his back and he would shake it off and he would pack it down. Yes, shovel full after shovel full, he would continuously shake it off and he would pack it down. Then with amazement to the crowd that was shoveling dirt on a donkey that would be buried alive they would see this donkey take a step up out of the well and trot off. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, uh, while they were shoveling dirt onto the back of this donkey, uh, yes, he was simply shaking it all off and he was packing it down. Thank you. Yes, uh, he had found the way out of the well. Yes, uh, and the way out of the well of your life, uh, yes, is not waiting and 